heard, Francis. I've been heard, Francis. You prayed for a miracle? How'd you know that? You've been heard. What? I... I... I, I prayed for a miracle. I, I, I've been heard. And you're it. I'm Jonathan. I'm not Francis. You're not Francis. You're not Francis Donaghy? Patrick Rogan. Patrick Rogan. You should see your face. Uh, this is St. Paul's, huh? Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity? Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, anyone can make a mistake now. Uh, Francis can wait a minute now, can't he? I, I've been waiting all my life. Uh, sit down, sit down. <laughs> there now. Yes, now, <clears throat> take the uh, stricken look off your face, man. Uh, don't, don't you see the humor in it? The humor? I mean. Well, now, now, please, put yourself in my place. Now, the minute I'm born, me mother takes one look at me ugly kisser and, and drops me off at the orphanage. And, and for the next 18 years, uh, when I'm not pushing the kid next to me away from me lunch or, 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 or dragging him out of me locker or fighting him off of me bed, I'm praying for a miracle to change the way it is. I, I, I never could keep nothing of me own then. And, and life being what it is, I, I've been pushing and dragging and fighting for, for everything I ever got since. And now here I, I am in church, uh, like I always been. Praying for the same old miracle. And glory be, what do you know? The miracle finally happens. Only it ain't my miracle. It's Francis's miracle. And he's over in St. Paul's. But pushing and dragging and fighting. Oh, I've had to clutch for every dime. Well, pushing, dragging and clutching. Uh... You summed it up. What about giving? Giving? What? You need a good talking to. I need more than talk, God knows. Francis is waiting. No, no, Francis, you're you're here now. Do something for me. Something. I mean, a, a man don't see too many miracles in his life. He's he's got to take advantage while he can, don't he? I'll be back. No, 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 no please. Honestly, Francis is desperate. So am I. Please. I've been miserable all my life. Miserable and, and lonely. Lonely, is it? Oh, so lonely. <laughs> Ah! Oh, oh. Oh. What? What's that? Ah, uh, that's a nice cat for you. Well, Mother Mary, I, I don't need a cat. I need a woman. A woman? Is that what you want? Well, I, would I have spent all my life praying for a cat? A woman it is, then. You're kidding. <laughs> now, you wait right here. She'll meet you. Where is she? I gotta go. Well, how will I know that it's her? Tell Francis that Patrick Rogan sends his regards. Insight. Stories of modern man's search for meaning. Freedom. Love. Insight. Before. I never got to say one to you, Mary. Ah, Grogan, you're a mad, impetuous fella, yard. Is this it then? Well, <clears throat> it ain't much of a palace, but it's me home. I served my father for 15 years, bless his soul. A great ape of a man. Oh, I loved him dearly. But he could be a bit untidy, too. Oh, it's been lonely these last few years, having no one to do for but myself. It's fine. I'll have it straightened up in a jiffy. Well, you don't want to do too much now. I've got my things where I'm used to them. Yes, I can see that. I mean, I know where everything is. 
Well, Pat, perhaps that's because everything's out in plain sight. But I think we could pick a couple of things off the floor, take advantage of the drawers, maybe even use the closet. Ah, oh, Pat, I'll try to make you a good wife. Ha, 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 ha. Careful there, woman. Yeah, you don't want to mess up the suit. If I get it back without a wrinkle, it only cost me ten dollars. I am sorry. Ah, oh, yes, I can see you're a frugal man. That's a virtue. It shows a man with a sense of the future. It was good of you to rent it for me. I've always dreamed of a formal wedding. It's sorry I am that none of your friends turned up. What friends are those? Well, some of the boys. Some of the boys, is it? Yes, I was anxious to meet some of their wives. You know, Pat, just because you're married now doesn't mean you have to give up any of your ways. If you want to have a night playing poker or out drinking with the boys, I don't mind. I'll just get to know the wives. What are you talking about, woman? What wives? What boys? Is that what you married me for, to have a ready-made circle of friends? Oh, no, Pat. You're all the friend I need, dear. Because of that, your angle, you're going to be very sadly disappointed. There are no friends. Boy, I see. Ah, oh, well, that's all right, Pat. In fact, I like a man what keeps to himself. Me old dad needed nobody, too, sometimes. What are your friends? Or were you too ashamed of me to give them a look at me? Ashamed? Ashamed of my husband? Patrick Grogan. I just didn't want you to go to the expense of making a party and all. Party? What party? Well, you can't invite people over and not give them a bite to eat. Even if it's just a bit of apple and some nuts and a pint of ale. Who said I wanted a party? Well, it can be a small affair. Affair? Whatever you want, Patrick. I'll just make up the bed for us. That's a single bed, you know. Yes, I was noticing that. I'll have to find some place for you to sleep. Well, I suppose I could sleep in the icebox. But if you'd be wanting me to scratch your back on the odd occasion, I'm afraid my hands might get a bit chilly for your darling skin. You need a place to sleep. I'll, I'll put me mind to it. Patrick, I know we met in church. But are you sure this marriage was made in heaven? Well, now, look who's here. I'd right about given you up. I said I'd be back. Well, it's been months, man. Where have you been? Oh, that's a, a dumb question. But, uh, uh, <clears throat> what are you doing down there on your knees? Same thing you are. You mean you still have to go through that after? We don't use a telephone, you know. Oh, uh, no, 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 I, I suppose not. But uh, still, I thought you developed a more sophisticated line of communication. No. With God, heart to heart is the quickest way. Heart to heart? Presuming you have a heart. <coughs> well, Patrick, how are things? How are things? Well, Jonathan, they're worse than ever. You've done me no favors. I don't understand. You wanted a woman. Misery loves company, don't you believe it? Two people can be twice as miserable as one. Patrick, you asked for a woman, you got a woman. <sighs> Maybe you should have kept the cat. Well, if you've changed your mind, I can always... Whoa, 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 man. Stay your hand there. A zoo is not the answer. Then what is the answer, Patrick Rogan? I married a woman who has as little as I have. All she ever had was her father. And he's kicked off. She brings me nothing. Nothing? Are you so sure? Well, what has she brought me but a body to take up space? Just a body. What else? Does she offer you no care, no compassion, no companionship? Well, who has time to notice all them things? I spend all my time trying to avoid bumping into the woman. I see. I've no place to put her, Jonathan. In the morning, I wake up and there's this little clump of bedclothes on the floor with her hair sticking out and... Uh, that nose, and it ain't the best nose in the world, you know. She's sleeping on the floor? Oh, it makes me feel that guilty, it does. Guilty? Yes, praying to God for a woman, then having to put her on the floor? Well, I'm sorry her nose displeases you. If only we had a house. A house? That would do it for you, eh? That's the only thing that's missing. The only thing? 
All right, go home, Patrick. I'll see if there's anything to be done. <laughs> Amazing thing, a bolt from Providence. My Uncle Mike is dead, poor thing. It's that half you are, woman, for shame. Oh, well, I didn't even know the man. Yet he's gone and left me his house. A big rambling thing on Forest Street, it says. Fifteen rooms, six bedrooms, six. Well, what do you think, Patty? It's not what I think, Annie, it's what I know. <laughs> oh, what do you know, then, darling? I know I'm being looked after by God. And by your Annie, too, by heaven. I came to you with nothing, lad. But now I can give you this present. For 15 years I looked after me dad. I never thought I'd have anybody of my own. And then one day, when I'd given up all hope, out of the blue. Oh, I do love you so, Patty. I just want to give you everything. You again. Problems, Grogan? You're liable to turn up anywhere. I go where I'm told. But this is a bar, you know. If we're needed in a bar, we go to a bar. God is not excluded from bars. Well, uh, go on out. I'll, I'll meet you in church. Grogan, any place is holy. If one is in communication with the Almighty. Please, it's embarrassing. I don't want him to think... I'm not a drunk, you know. Five minutes. He said, just let me down me brew. What's the matter with the house? Nothing. Oh, it's a magnificent house. She gave me a great, big, wonderful house. Then why are you dissatisfied? Who can pay the taxes on it? And the heat? It's a great pile of cement that's dragging me under. Well, do you want a better paying job? God forbid. Excuse me. I'm an elevator man. I never wanted to be an elevator man, but now that I've been an elevator man for 25 years and the handle me side fits me hand like a glove, you want me to change? Grogan. You want a pint for your friend here? Oh, no. Well, I... Uh, no, he, he does not care me. for a drink. Thank you, uh, Malloy. <clears throat> Please, uh, why don't we uh, meet in some nice warm church somewhere? It's, it's drafty here. <laughs> You'll catch your death. <laughs> oh, what am I talking about? You're a difficult man to please, Patrick. Do you know where the house is, Jonathan? It's on 4th Street. You should see the neighbours we've got. And me going in and out in these clothes. It's a laugh. Well, what's the matter with your clothes, man? They're so poorly. Ah, oh, when I was living in the other place, uh, they fit in all right. What with the riffraff we had on that block. But uh, here... Do you know what I've been doing? Uh, no. I've been going in and out by the back way. In my uniform, pretending to be a chauffeur. A chauffeur. Uh, can you imagine? Me being able to afford a chauffeur? We don't even have a car. Does Annie mind it too? Annie? I never let her out of the house at all, at all. You don't let her out of oh, the house. Oh, don't be foolish, Jonathan. It'd be embarrassing. She's only got those rags, you know. And I'll tell you something else. It's about done me patience having to do all of the shopping. The shopping? Almighty God, what is it? It's money, lad. Money, yes, I can see that. <laughs> I'm not blind, you know, but there's money. Ah, there, there's money! <laughs> is there any money left anywhere in the whole world for anybody else? I don't know, I don't know. All I know is this here is $50,000 I found in the attic. And this was all your uncle's money? Yes, it was his. 
Now it's mine. And with all my heart, I'm giving it to you, my sweet. Take it, Pat. Take it and pay the bills. And buy yourself a good suit so you can walk out the front door as is fitting. Jonathan, where are you? Have I been abandoned then? Ah, Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Grogan, is there to be no end? Abandoned. You can hardly complain for lack of attention. Look at you. Pretty rich, I must say. Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan, it's been five long months since I've seen your face. Come on, come on. I'm working on another case. What is it? Well, there's obviously something wrong in my head, but I, I can't seem to figure it out. You can't say your prayers haven't been answered. No, I can't say that. Uh, you've done your best for me, but uh, it's like a great weight on me chest. I, I, I don't mean to be ungrateful. The bills are paid. Bills? There are no bills. They're all paid in advance. I have plenty of money. Then what is bothering you? What's bothering me is that it's all hers. All the money is hers. I quit my job. I had to work five days a week to bring home $115. I was mortified, so now everything we got is hers. Well, is she, uh... She holding anything back from you? Annie, holding anything out? Ah, she wouldn't even know how to do that. Wouldn't even occur to her. But it's all hers, don't you see? It's all hers, don't you hear? It's all hers. Don't you realize? The house, the money, these clothes. She gives everything to me. She never takes anything for herself. Never buys anything for herself. If I want to buy her something with her own money, she pish-toshes it. She never needs anything. She just says she doesn't want anything. How can I help you? What do you want? Want? I don't know. I don't know what I want. When I was poor, it was easy to know what I wanted. I had nothing. I thought a woman would be the answer, but it wasn't. All I was doing was share in the nothing I had. And now, I think I have everything. And still, I can give her nothing. Can't you? What? What can I give her? Jonathan, be an angel. Help me. Hello? Grogan, it's for you. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Patrick Grogan. Yes, but is she okay? Yes, yes, but, but is she okay? Yes, I'll be right there. Annie's at the hospital. There was a fire at the house. She's had a heart attack. The police took her to the hospital. Jonathan, that's help. I told you I had a surprise for you, love. And here it is, the old place fixed up just the way it was. <laughs> ah, Doctor, it's good to be out of your hospital and home again. And you're going to be all right, aren't you? Oh, he's such a good man. I don't know what I'd do without him. Weights on me hand and foot. Oh, it's a good man he is, but it's lucky you are, too. She'd be in a terrible way without you, Grogan. Ah, but what a pity it was what happened. It wasn't so bad, was it, love? I'll get you a glass of water. Oh, it's that guilty, I feel. The man will be sleeping on the floor like a sack of laundry while this sack of nothing I am takes up the bed. Will you listen to the woman, Doctor? It's no more than she did for me when we was first married. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's probably Mrs. Godfrey. And right on time, too. Ah, oh, hello, Mrs. Godfrey. It's good to see you. I think I can be going home now. 
Will you be all right for about half an hour, love? I'll uh, walk the doctor to the corner, and then I'm going to run a quick errand. Ah, sure, Pat. <laughs> you go about your business. Get a bit of fresh air. We'll be fine, won't we, Mrs. Godfrey? Don't you stir now. <laughs> I'll be back before you know it. Come on, Doc. I'll walk you part of the way. Patrick Rogan? Oh, Jonathan, how are you? I think the question is, how is Annie? Oh, uh, Annie, oh, she's fine. I, I, I think she's going to be just fine. Yes. No, 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 that, that, that's okay. Yeah. They're tears of, of happiness. And, uh, and gratefulness. A lot has happened these weeks. A lot indeed. Jonathan, you've obviously been out of touch, me lad. You'll notice that the, the cut of me clothes are not what they were when I saw you last. Well, uh... Oh, and it turns out that 50,000 ain't worth a hill of beans. <laughs> if you ain't got a penny's worth of insurance. <laughs> and the wee bit that's left is going to pay nurse and doctor. Well, you poor man. Oh, me? No, no, Jonathan, I... Tell you the truth, I don't really mind for myself at all, but, but Annie, poor Annie, she had a heart attack and she nearly died. It was so upset she was when, when she saw all that smoke and uh, them chopping the roof in and she, she passed out right there on the street, it seems. Do you know the foolish girl thought I'd leave her? Because she couldn't give me anything anymore? Do you realize the daffiness of that? Me leave her, her. Would never try to do nothing. Never wanted to do nothing, but, but, but give me things. She did give you an awful lot, Patrick. Ah, oh, she did indeed. But me, with me cold heart, I, I couldn't break down the old ways. Receiving is an art, you know. I couldn't accept. <laughs> Pride. Tis truly a sin that me pride wouldn't let me accept. And so I couldn't give her back the one thing that I could have give. And then I, then I see her lying there so sick and so helpless. And I, I said to myself, Patrick Grogan, what kind of a man are you? Her, what never wanted to do anything but, but make me happy and, and, and better me lot. And now she's had a heart attack. <laughs> because there's no more that she could give me. And so I set to work and I made her better. I give her a lot of love. It's the only thing she ever really wanted from me. That's a beautiful smile you have there, Jonathan. Are you pleased with me then? I'm very pleased, Patrick. <laughs> ah, Annie's gonna be all right now, and I, I'm getting me all job back. I did like to get her something, something in the way of a present, you know, that. But that would cheer her up. <laughs> A cat. Well, for the love of God. <laughs> 